Hi, my name is uh, Archimedes Kalaizidis. I am a professor at, uh, in the United States. And I do believe that uh, the Indian uh, move was uh, illegal. Uh, I believe it does not contribute to peace and development in the region, and it should be avoided and should be, um, of course, the people of Kashmir should be given the right to self-determination and independence. Uh, you have worked a lot on Jammu and Kashmir dispute. Yeah. What is the viable solution as per your research and your, the work you have done so far? I would, I would suggest a referendum um, uh, that, that should be uh, taken, undertaken in all of Kashmir. Unfortunately, the situation is not exactly conducive to right now this happening, but maybe in the future. Um, and uh, my, my own research points to bringing international organizations and human rights organizations, in spe specifically human rights organizations, to bear in the uh, pro problem of Kashmir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I see the dispute as a intensely serious, and I need to get to the second part of your question because it's not going to be easily settled. This is the rising of a new colonial power in the region, and to settle it is going to be very complicated. And in a few sentences, I can't find the answer that you need. So I'm sorry to say that, but I haven't, I'm aware of post-colonial conflicts in places like Ireland and Cyprus and Sri Lanka, which have led to civil war. So it's going to need deep analysis of how to resolve it. Sir, my last question is, uh, India is uh, one of the largest democracies in the world, but for the last more than three months, yeah. there is no any political activity, human rights abuses are on the rise. What do you think about that? Uh, that that's a, uh, if I was an Indian specialist, I would be able to answer that one too. Um, India is going in a very strange direction and it's due to neoliberal economics that is at the basis of it to support the uh, new large international companies in India which is at the base of everything else. That's my observation. How uh, do you see your visit both in Islamabad and Muzaffarabad? I'm in a learning process. I'm learning very fast. Um, and uh, my role here is to find out as much as I can because it's not known in the West what is actually happening here. Few words about Pakistan. Pakistan is the friend of America just like India is the friend of America and that causes great problems for Pakistan in this conflict because they can't both be friends of the same major power. You look troubled by that answer. Before answering your question, let me say my position. My position is that the, the, the Modi government has taken totally illegal action uh, and the, the, the Supreme Court itself must have been manipulated by political forces. It's not really independent. Uh, and, and that's my position. Uh, and therefore, this question requires um, careful consideration by global institutions in order to have a peaceful solution. However, this however is very important. I think taking the matter to the United Nations will not help. I think uh, Prime Minister Imr uh, Khan um, made a very good emotional speech and uh, he also said that this could provoke some kind of nuclear reaction because Imran Khan is very, very diplomatic and correct. How far he will be able to contain the emotions of the people in Kashmir and in Pakistan um, is difficult to say. Um, but the United Nations is not the way. 
is is simply security council it, 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 it. so let me say what can be done i think what might be done is to not take it to the international body but to take take it to regional body within asia or euro asian body there you have forces like the chinese and the russians and, and the turks and iran all right and these are the countries that should make it a major regional political conflict which is doing injustice to the people of kashmir nobody knows about their where they are how do you see the action taken by the modi government in how does it suit to india to put the political leaders behind the bars well you know we are we are playing with words in my view india is not a democratic state in my view any country that oppresses the working people and enriches the rich people and does nothing for the poor majority of the people is not democratic at all because the voice of the people is not heard even within the in the indian parliament the elite they are talking the rich people are enjoying their richness the riches but the poor people are left india is not a democracy okay and this is true of many of our countries the countries that are really democratic are those that have gone through revolutions revolutions cuba is democratic small country democratic and the masses are behind the cuban regime they can challenge america china is a democratic country revolution russia okay um, north korea is a small country democratic although it looks as if it is demo, de dictated dictatorship of kim but the people are behind him and they can challenge trump so my friend what we are facing is a situation where some of these countries including pakistan by the way i'll be frank have not gone through revolution so my last question Hanji. how do you see the, see the future of india after the steps taken by the government in jammu and kashmir and how do you see the future of india uh, in the government of modi wow it's a good question and i am not really expert on on india really i come from uganda as i said of course i am from indian origin and uh, from punjab initially uh be very frank uh modi he is a populist he has now gained even more support from the people than before because he is able to speak with emotions to to um, create uh, that sentiment among the people uh my blame in the indian system goes to progressive sections of the indian population which is large um Uh, trade unions are there there are academics institutions that have followed a, a radical view they count for nothing and they are unable to unite as they did in china unable to unite in order to create a vanguard movement people's movement which can then bring about transformation of india that won't happen so i'm afraid i'm very pessimistic about india's future